the twists and turns of CATL's plan to build a battery factory in the United States have finally seen progress this year. However, the news brings mixed feelings. Back then, CATL and Ford jointly announced, both parties will cooperate to build a new power battery factory in Michigan, USA, producing lithium-ion phosphate batteries, with a total investment of up to $3.5 billion. Yet, in Ford's press release, it was stated, this is the first battery factory fully owned by an automobile manufacturer in the United States, introducing lithium-ion phosphate battery solutions for Ford's electric vehicle products, offering consumers a richer battery technology selection. In this battery factory, CATL's role is to provide technical and service support for the production of Ford's lithium-ion phosphate batteries. Ford engineers will be responsible for cell and vehicle integration. In other words, CATL achieved the output of technology and services but did not realize the landing of capital. CATL is already the world's largest electric vehicle battery manufacturer, with 13 factories in Europe and Asia. This collaboration with Ford seems to be a subtle yet inevitable way for CATL to enter the US market. The factory, located about 160 kilometers west of Detroit in the rural town of Marshall, Michigan, is expected to start production in 2026 with an initial workforce of 2,500. The initial designed annual capacity is about 35 gigawatt hours, GWH, providing power battery packs for approximately 400,000 Ford electric vehicles each year. Before the final location decision, there were multiple bids from various locations. However, due to uncertainties in the relationship between the two parties, the governor of Virginia withdrew the bid for the Ford CATL factory. Perhaps for the same reason, Ford ultimately chose to fully own the factory, allowing CATL to enter the US market through technology output. In this way, based on the Innovation Act passed in the United States last year, CATL is not excluded from the domestic electric vehicle manufacturers. However, things have not been smooth. According to media reports, on September 25th, Ford announced the suspension of construction of a $3.5 billion electric vehicle battery factory in Michigan, citing concerns about the competitiveness of operating the factory. Reports indicate that a week before, the United Auto Workers initiated a strike affecting Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis. Ford made several offers to the union during contract negotiations but failed to reach an agreement. Ford stated, We will pause construction on the Marshall Project and limit construction spending until we are confident in our ability to operate the factory competitively. However, they refused to disclose the specific reasons for this decision, adding that other factors were being considered. We have not made any final decisions on investment plans there. Since February of this year, the project has faced obstacles since Ford and CATL officially announced their collaboration on building a new power battery factory. In July of this year, Media reports revealed that two committees in the U.S. House of Representatives were investigating the collaboration between Ford and CATL, asking Ford to respond to issues such as transaction license agreement documents and whether the created job opportunities will flow to China. Ford previously explained that indeed there are a certain number of CATL technical experts in the factory, but these employees will not be included in the 2,500 new job positions created by the project. Furthermore, as mentioned earlier, Ford owns the new factory through a wholly owned subsidiary, rather than operating it as a joint venture with CATL. Ford has 100% ownership of the new factory, including the plant and infrastructure, while CATL is responsible for providing construction and operational services, as well as licensing its battery patent technology. The technology licensing model is similar to various patent fees collected by mobile phone manufacturers. Since CATL is not directly involved in the investment, Ford's new factory can still enjoy the production tax credits under the U.S. Innovation Act, IRA. Meanwhile, CATL, without capital investment, opens the door to the U.S. market through this model, providing a new paradigm for Chinese power battery companies to explore overseas markets. It appears to be a win-win collaboration. We know that in recent years, the U.S. national security strategy reports have repeatedly identified China as a major competitor and recognized the next decade as a critical period for Sino-U.S. strategic competition. Under such subjective judgments, the U.S. is determined to decouple completely from China in critical and sensitive areas such as high technology, accelerating a decainification in the industrial, supply, and value chains. 
the semiconductor industry, centered around chips, is a typical example of the US completely decoupling from China, aligning with its allies. From sanctioning ZTE to suppressing Huawei, from pressuring TSMC to move factories to the US to obstructing China's access to lithography technology and equipment, and the noise about China's chips can only reach 14 nanometers, while the US can achieve 5 nanometers. The Sino-US competition in semiconductors and chips has become a microcosm of their struggle, and great power competition in the high-tech field. So, who will become the next semiconductor in Sino-US strategic competition and decoupling? Combining the cases mentioned above and numerous facts, we have every reason to believe it is the new energy industry. In recent years, including US elites such as Secretary of State Blinken, there is unanimous agreement that China's capabilities and scale in the renewable energy manufacturing industry far exceed those of the United States. The energy industry is a crucial component of a country's real economy and the core driving force behind economic development. In the next era driven by renewable energy, the United States cannot tolerate China leading in this field. Therefore, there are increasing voices in US politics calling for suppressing China's renewable energy industry and must decouple from China in this field. In response to this phenomenon, Mr. Li Cheng, the director of the John L. Thornton China Center at the Brookings Institution, and his colleagues recently wrote an article titled Renewable Energy Should Not Become the Next Semiconductor. In Sino-US competition, the article mentions that the Innovation Act, IRA, is the United States' largest and most important national policy for addressing climate change. The law provides $300 billion in subsidies over the next decade to stimulate low-carbon transformation and onshore renewable energy manufacturing. While bringing back renewable energy manufacturing to the US is a significant achievement, it is unclear whether this goal can be achieved without disrupting the global supply chain. And China is a major participant in the renewable energy industry supply chain. In the face of climate change and energy transformation, Washington and Beijing are faced with a choice whether to create cooperation space for promoting low-carbon transformation or to decouple for strategic competition. Blind mutual dependence poses energy security risks, while open decoupling slows down the deployment and implementation of green low-carbon technologies, endangering the global climate agenda. After witnessing the destructive decoupling in the semiconductor, chip, industry, before making decisions about the geopolitical driving force of renewable energy manufacturing, both China and the US must weigh the costs and benefits. In fact, everyone understands that if decoupling from China, the US low-carbon transformation will be slow and expensive. The controversy arising from the cooperation between Ford and CATL in building a $3.5 billion battery factory in Michigan, involving Senators Joe Manchin from West Virginia and Marco Rubio from Florida, citing national security issues and economic interests, perhaps best illustrates the urgency of this deliberation. Despite political resistance, the collaboration between Ford and CATL may just be the beginning of a series of potential collaborations between the US and China in renewable energy. As geopolitical tensions escalate between the world's two largest emitters, balancing renewable energy cooperation and strategic competition not only affects bilateral relations, but also impacts global efforts to address climate change. According to data from the International Energy Agency, China has established a leading position in the global green technology supply chain. Leveraging the scale and expertise of Chinese manufacturers will be key for the US to meet domestic supply needs in the renewable energy industry through global markets. To compete better, the US needs to learn from the practices of Asian economies such as China, Japan, and South Korea, which have evolved from technological laggards to major exporters in the renewable energy industry. Without strategic foresight, the renewable energy industry could easily become the next victim in the ongoing global competition, following in the footsteps of the semiconductor sector. However, it's crucial to view renewable energy products as a public good that responsible nations should collectively provide, distinguishing them from technologies like semiconductors. A low-carbon, sustainable future should not be treated as a reward in the geopolitical competition. While geopolitical competition may persist for decades, climate action is needed urgently. Decision makers from both countries must demonstrate strategic vision and courage, establishing boundaries for competition while preserving space for collaboration. So, what's your take on today's topic? Feel free to share your perspective in the comments below. That wraps up our discussion for today, and we'll catch you in the next video.